my mom's sister was a singer that was just she was she had wild red hair and full of life and black oak arkansas picked her up in 70 i'll say it was like 71 they had a hit in 1971 or 72 called jim danny to the rescue just you know she was wild man and didn't take no shit and her voice was was much bigger than she ever was this all started when i was about 15 and I was going to a concert. I was actually helping out as a roadie at 15 years old for a band called Head East. They were a big Midwestern band back in the mid to late 70s. And um, I had the fortune of seeing Grey Star, which was fronted by Ruby Star, and they blew me away. I mean, the band was tight and her voice was colossal. I mean, she was this little, I don't know how tall she was, but she was, couldn't have been 90 pounds of that and just had a voice, you know, that matched almost like Janis Joplin, but she had her own sound and uh, I was so blown away. I got the album while I was there and had the whole band signed it and I was like, I don't have Ruby's signature and we'll get her for you. So they got Ruby Starr down there and, and she's like, absolutely, I'll sign it. And she signed it gave me a kiss on the cheek and walked away and the crew's up there laughing their asses off because I'm, I'm just I'm beat red. I'm blushed out. I kind of ran out of the auditorium with my record, you know, I was all like freaked out. Well, a few months later they came back and, and played the club circuit and uh, I just started going to see her, you know. She came off their tour bus and, hey, you're that kid, you know, and uh, brought me up and started talking to me and the third visit I brought down a boatload of songs and she actually took the time to sit down and, and told me what I was doing wrong like about hooks you know your 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 fourth lines your bridges she basically taught me how to write lyrics or, or the mechanics to to writing lyrics and then mentored me about stage etiquette how to treat your fans, how, how, just how to conduct yourself as a rock star. I mean, she was the real deal. She used to take me on tour as a kid every summer. My mom was a single mom raising two kids and, and in order to get me out of my mom's hair as I was starting to be a trouble maniac from the time I was 10, 11 years old. I was touring on the road with her. She'd take me on the road all summer and we were touring with big bands from the 70s she was a pack of dynamite, man. And everybody in the industry, in a male-dominated industry, there weren't a lot of female singers like there are today. Um, she stood out. She stood out. Everybody knew her. Everybody loved her. Um, she was with Blackfoot for a while, and, and Ricky Medlock, who is now the band leader for Leonard Skinner, still talks really highly of her, and we're still, we're still really good friends. That's another way that we're all kind of linked together. Even our record deal that we got with Damien, um, the management company was sent to Toledo, Ohio to check out some other band. They showed up here That's right. in a blizzard and we had a sold out show that night. And, you know, we as a band, we rehearsed for a year, about five or six days a week before we even played a gig. And uh, we were tight. We had some great songs. And, you know, I started she started reading Randy's lyrics and she would start calling me on the phone, hyping me up about Randy. and. And it was crazy because he really moved here. He moved in with me and my grandparents and uh, we hit it off, man. And we, and, you know, that's 36 years ago. And, and it's pretty amazing all the stuff that we've been through, the different phases of music and styles. We had a common link that we both loved, Ronnie James Dio and uh, Ruby knew him well. And uh, that just kind of put us all, all together and it kind of come full circle because now we're redoing one of her songs. Burning Whiskey has always been one of my favorite songs and uh, at one point, I, I grew up in Burlington, Iowa, a little town on the Mississippi River. She had told me that her nephew lived in Toledo, Ohio and uh, you guys are meant to be together. He's a kick-ass drummer, he's the same age as you. You guys should be together. Gave me his number and uh, you know after a couple months of calling I, I came out there and a few months after that him and I auditioned for Damien got the part and the rest is, is history. I had fallen in love as I was probably, I don't even know, I was probably like 12 years old. I fell in love with the band Van Halen as soon as they came out. I was hot on them. They were playing them on the radio all the time. I really wanted to see him. Well, she called me and she's like, hey man, we're going to see Van Halen. Honestly, sending a limo over to get us. And I'm like, what? I'm like, who's Ozzy? Okay, cool, great. I remember that guy that talks funny, you know. So we're, uh, 
we actually, I was in Van Halen's dressing room at one point. I I was watching the show and uh, Eddie Van Halen's on one side of me, Alex Van Halen's on the other side of me. And I'm a little kid trying to be invisible. I've been there dressing room taking a pee and Alex Van Halen's like, hey, what the fuck is this kid doing in here? Eddie's like, dude, that's Ruby Starr's nephew, man. He's cool. And I'm like, I'm just trying to be invisible. And Alex is like, dude, we got naked chicks out here dancing on the table. And Eddie's like, I'm sure he's seen all that. <laughs> Later that night, you know, we're hanging out with those guys. We had dinner and stuff. And Ruby and Ozzy disappeared for a while. And, and Ruby's boyfriend, who was playing at the band at the time, he's like, hey, go get your aunt and tell her it's time to go. And I go up to Ozzy's room and I'm knocking on the door. And I hear Ozzy in there and he goes, He's looking through the peephole and he's like, there's a fucking kid out there, man. And Ruby's like, oh, that's my son, let him in. And I was just like, what about all this cocaine? And she's like, he's seen it all, you know? I mean, just, you know, you can he, anything that I do, he knows about, you can, you know. And Ozzy was geeked out of his mind, his eyes were huge. And it, it, it just, it was insane, you know, some of the, and that's just one of the stories that, you know, Cheap Trick, The Who, um, she opened for a lot of these big bands, and they all knew her. They all loved her. And, biggest uh, concert in California. Biggest concert yeah, in the California country. California Jam. Uh, she was she was the only female performer at the first original California Jam, and to half a million people. Yeah, half wasn't a million it? people. They all, the bands had to be flown in. Emerson, Lincoln Palmer was there. Deep Purple. Black Sabbath. Sabbath. Yeah, it's crazy how it's kind of come full circle, and here we are today, still, you know, reminiscing about all the connections that she had all of this the, uh, the entire music and he, me and randy have even went separate ways and and we both had bands but it's still all connected by ruby somehow mm -hmm. you can talk about things in retrospect but really the bottom line is is i'm sitting here doing this and the starting point to that is ruby star she let it be known that that when she was in charge she was in charge and and she knew when she had an idea she knew exactly what she wanted and you know like you know here we are 35 years later we had played in a band together damien had a great history did well and we're getting ready to do our 35th anniversary and it's just crazy that we're still you know hopefully we're making music that's relevant but just to be able to play and and be blessed enough to have had a career this long and that we've lived through some of the shit that we've done is pretty amazing in itself there was this club called The Woodshed, and everybody loved Ruby. I mean, she had this huge following. And so I, w I went to The Woodshed to see them play. And at that time, we were already talking, and, you know, she always took time out for me. No matter what they were doing, no matter what their schedule, she always took the time to talk to me. And there was one uh, time they were down there. I'm waiting outside the club, and the club owner's telling Ruby, you can't bring him in here, he's underage, I could lose my liquor license. And Ruby was like, well, it's like this, he either gets in here or I'm not singing tonight. Oh, take it easy, Ruby, you know, and she, and he goes, all right, he can sit behind the PA, don't say nothing, don't move. And I was just like, I don't want to get anyone in trouble. She's like, I got this, you know, and. You know, me and Randy have been making music together for a long time, and when he decided to do this Haunted North project, he had talked about doing one of Ruby's songs and immediately I was like, oh man, this is awesome. You know, and then we got together with JD from Black Label Society. I flew to New Jersey, recorded drum tracks. And uh, I'll tell you, it's an honor. I, you know, and JD didn't know my Aunt Ruby, but when I told him the story of how me and Randy met and how this all kind of came full circle, he was like, man, we got to get this song out to the rest of the world and tell them about your Aunt Ruby Star. He goes, because it's, it's an amazing story. It really is. Here we are, man. So I hope you enjoy it. This is Burning Whiskey, the remake, um, with a little bit of Ruby herself in the beginning, a cappella. Enjoy. Peace.